Hey there, Social Democrat 01. I'm going to be addressing you directly in this video, since I know you're watching this. I saw that little polemic you made against me, and I thought it was pretty swell. But as you could imagine, I do object to some of the things you said about me. First off, you played a clip of me at the beginning of your video where I am condemning the Salvador Allende regime. Since you provided no context for it, I should like to point out that that clip was not from any of my videos, but was actually taken from a two hour long debate I had on Luis Marrero's channel several months ago. Although I stand by what I said, I probably would have phrased myself a bit differently, since I know that this is a very contentious issue, and my opinion regarding Allende and Pinochet is a bit more nuanced than you present in your video. So let me just say this plain and simple. I am no supporter of Augusto Pinochet. Many human rights abuses were committed under his regime, many people were slaughtered and wrongfully imprisoned, and any human being with a conscience would have to condemn that. However, you're kidding yourself if you think that Chile was any better off under the Allende regime than under Pinochet. Now before I address your arguments, I would just like to give you a brief history of the Salvador Allende regime. As you know, Allende became the first openly Marxist leader of a Latin American state when he became president of Chile in 1970. At the onset of his regime, Allende began to requisition privately owned factories and mines by buying out shareholders. As you could imagine, all this profligate spending created an enormous budget deficit, and by 1972, Chile was $300 million in debt Real wages had dropped nearly 10% across the board, GDP was in decline, and in typical Marxist fashion, Allende tried to pay for all this debt by printing money. And we all know what the effect of printing money is. So by the time Allende was thrown out of power in 1973, inflation in Chile had reached a whopping 508%. The crippling state of poverty and economic stability that Allende had inflicted on his country had fomented a great deal of civil unrest as well. So by 1972, Allende was no longer able to requisition private businesses by buying out shareholders, so the state used paramilitary gangs to seize these businesses by force. And by the end of his regime, street violence had become commonplace. As usual, I will provide several links in the description if you want to verify all this information for yourself. Now, Social Democrat 01, you say that I blame the economic instability solely on Allende, while I ignore the U.S. embargo placed on Chile. Now, I did a little research about this, and I could not find any sources that indicate that the U.S. ever issued an embargo on the Allende regime. They certainly issued economic sanctions against Chile and refused loans to them, but the only embargo I could find information about was in, a, was in an arms embargo issued in 1974, which was against the Pinochet regime. But regardless, the fact that the US issued sanctions against Chile is totally irrelevant. The reason Chile had such a large budget deficit was due to the fact that Allende was spending state funds requisitioning private businesses. If he hadn't engaged in such reckless and irresponsible spending, there would never have been a need to print so much money to begin with. However, it must be noted that during the Allende years, Chile received an enormous amount of financial aid from other countries besides the United States. In 1972, the Allende government received $950 million in aid and $547 million in 1973, including a $100 million loan from the International Monetary Fund. 
So the argument that you're making that U.S. sanctions were somehow solely to blame for the massive inflation under Allende is absolutely absurd. Next, you claim that the economist Friedrich Hayek supported the Pinochet regime, and that this somehow exposes classical liberalism as being in support of fascism. Not only is your reasoning flawed, but you seem to be oversimplifying Hayek's position. Let me share this quote from Hayek to really illustrate what he thought about Pinochet. As long-term institutions, I am totally against dictatorships. But a dictatorship may be a necessary system for a transitional period. At times, it is necessary for a country to have, for a time, some form or other of dictatorial power. As you will understand, it is possible for a dictator to govern in a liberal way. It is also possible for a democracy to govern with a total lack of liberalism. Personally, I prefer a liberal dictator to democratic government lacking in liberalism. My personal impression is that in Chile, we will witness a transition from a dictatorial government to a liberal government. During this transition, it may be necessary to maintain certain dictatorial powers. Like Hayek, I certainly think that democracy is preferable to a dictatorship. However, democracy is not without its flaws, as demonstrated by the fact that Allende came to power through a democratic process. If Salvador Allende had not driven Chile's economy into the ground, there never would have been a need for the coup d'etat that led to Pinochet's rise to power to begin with. I should also point out that Hayek was correct in saying that Chile would transition from a dictatorship to a liberal government. In 1988, Pinochet issued a referendum to determine whether or not he should stay in power. The majority of the Chilean people voted no, and so Pinochet stepped down as dictator without a single shot being fired. As much of a scumbag as Pinochet may have been, you have to give him credit for that. I can't think of any dictator, let alone a Marxist dictator, who voluntarily and peacefully stepped down from power. You also make the claim that because I am not a feminist, and because Pinochet was not a feminist, then somehow this makes me sympathetic of Pinochet. While it is true that I am certainly not a feminist, I think you are smart enough to know that this argument is totally fallacious. Pinochet also had a mustache. Does that mean that anybody with a mustache supports fascism as well? As I have already stated, I have no intention of defending the atrocities committed by the Pinochet regime. The blood that was shed during the 1973 coup, as well as the thousands who were executed during Operation Condor, stand testament to the brutality of the Pinochet dictatorship. You are absolutely correct in saying that this violence should be condemned. However, you cannot ignore the fact that unlike the Allende regime, the Pinochet regime achieved relative economic stability, achieved GDP growth, it succeeded in curtailing the massive inflation, and paid off the budget deficit caused by the Allende regime. This just goes to show the superiority of economic liberalism compared to Marxist collectivism, even when the former is implemented through violence. All the Marxist sophistry and populist rhetoric in the world does not change the fact that the failure of the Allende regime was the direct result of idiotic collectivist policies. And it's interesting that Marxists such as yourself are so quick to point out the atrocities committed in capitalist countries, but ignore or justify atrocities that occur in socialist countries. If you apply the same standards that you use to condemn Augusto Pinochet to any socialist or communist regimes, then you would have to conclude that socialism's track record is absolutely nothing to be proud of. The failure of the Allende presidency is direct evidence of the failure of Marxist economic policies. And I just have to make one final point, Social Democrat 01. I think it's quite presumptuous that you should name your video Another Right-Wing Libertarian Exposed, as though you have uncovered some sort of damning evidence against me. In reality, you haven't exposed shit.